Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the men's grooming brand revolutionizing how guys take care of their bodies. Get that body hair under control for the summer with my code Holly at manscaped.com. That'll get you 20% off plus free shipping. Okay, so my guest today doesn't really need an introduction. I think most of you guys know who she is. She's been on the show before, back in 2020, when we were both just a couple of months away from giving birth to our daughters, who are only like two weeks apart in age. Since then, we've watched her balance her life as a new mom, diversify her brand, marry her longtime partner, Adam22, and through all of this, continue to grow her brand with dizzying speed. Welcome back, content creator and all-around marketing genius, <laughs> Lena The Plug. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's good to be back in person. We had to do Zoom last time. We did. I think that was my first ever Zoom pod. Yeah. I like it better in person. It is so much better yeah. in person. I just remember both of us were so pregnant. So pregnant, yeah. And we were just like sitting there like, just like, do you get heartburn? Yeah. Do you, get, like, <laughs> do you feel itchy? I'm not looking forward to the days of having pregnancy heartburn again in the future, one day. But that, that was like the worst symptom of all of them. Yeah. How was your pregnancy overall? Uh, I don't think I could have asked for a better pregnancy. Yeah. I was pregnant during the pandemic. I got pregnant February 2020. So the idea of FOMO like didn't exist to me because there was nothing to miss out on. It was a great time to take a break from work. Um, and I just got to spend a lot of time taking care of myself. I felt like I had the best antidepressants ever. Whatever was happening hormonally with the pregnancy, I was just like on top of the world. Nothing phased me. Nothing could hurt my feelings. Um the labor itself didn't go the way I wanted. I wanted like a home birth, yada, 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 ended up with a C-section. But besides that, everything was great. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to nurse because I had two breast augmentations where they cut um, through your nipples, which I guess is a gamble whether or not you'll be able to nurse. And I'm still breastfeeding. So yeah, I, I had a lot of luck there. Yeah. So clearly no problem. Yeah. I, I hear you on that. I feel like COVID was the best time to be pregnant because yeah. I felt, I also felt great. Like those hormones are like drugs, yeah. man. Like I wish I could bottle that shit I, and take I it every day. I completely agree. Because I was in the best mood. Yeah. I was just like, the world is wonderful. Like, you know, people are dying all around us. There's like the news cycles, just this 24 yeah. seven of like, will we ever go back to work? And then I'm like picking roses in my garden and riding my bike. And I'm yeah. like, life is wonderful. I went on super long walks every single day. Yeah. I'm like not a care in the world. Yeah. Did you feel like right after you gave birth though, you had like a dump? of those hormones and you were maybe a little down? It, I, a little bit, but it wasn't as bad. I've heard, like my sister-in-law had a pretty bad, she didn't have postpartum, but uh -huh. she had a pretty bad hormone like dump. like the blues right yeah, after. Yeah, I, I had a, experienced a little bit of that. I remember one day specifically where I felt like really weird and I was like almost almost catatonic. Like I wasn't like really talking. It was very yeah. strange. And then after that, I, I was okay. Yeah, I would say it was like a couple weeks for me where it was like 6 p.m. every day and it had started to get dark early because mm -hmm. it was November. Yeah. I'd be like really down. Yeah. At that time, I was like, no visitors after five <laughs> to see the baby. I just want to be alone. It's kind of, I mean, you know, at the time it's like you're trying to, because everybody tells you, right, cherish every moment because they're going to get big so fast. And I remember trying to distinctly remember every moment. But now when I look back, it's kind of a blur. Yeah. Um, I remember things when I see other people taking care of their newborn. Like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I remember this. And I remember this. But to be honest, besides like the extra sleep and extra cuddles you get because they just pass out anywhere, I don't like the newborn stage. I want to pop out a six-month-old baby that yeah. can sit upright. Yeah. Because then they're like a little bit more manageable. You have to hold them with two hands when they're born. You mm -hmm. can't do anything else. Mm -hmm. And, and they give you nursing. They so. give you no feedback, like no smiling, no <laughs> yeah. laughing. They just cry, poop, and feed and sleep. Yeah. So I, I would love to have a six month old baby and just skip that whole newborn stage. Do you remember the first time Parker smiled? Because I remember like looking for that with Violet. I was like, when is she gonna smile and well, make me feel like this was worth it? It's like uh, they're not emotional smiles, right? They're right. like involuntary smiles in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I have a video of her smiling. I think like two days after she was born. So I don't know if that was the first time, but we we were vlogging. So we have one. Right. So I don't know. How about you? I do remember like the first time she smiled. Like, I, I don't know. It's so it's funny too, because when you have a kid, like the fear that just these new fears come up, right? Like, you know, you think your baby's going to stop breathing. Mm -hmm. They're so like delicate. And yeah. I mean, I was just constantly like scared she was going to die. Were you Googling things all night long? Oh yeah. Was I, I was, I couldn't sleep. I was terrible. just Googling shit. So I was obsessed with the fear that she would have autism. Oh, 
Like, yeah. I, I, so I'm like looking for Which eye you contact. you can't know until they're like five. You can't, but if you Google it online, they'll tell you signs of yeah. recognized autism I at mean, three if months. If they're not making eye contact by like six months, it's a right. pretty good sign, but yeah. like they can't say for sure until they're like a lot no, older. They definitely can't, but you can certainly find links online that can scare the living bejesus yeah. out of you. Yeah. So I was doing that a lot. Um, she <laughs> definitely doesn't have autism. She is very social and like locked in yeah. and- um, I know Parker's always telling me, mom, be happy. If like one second, I'm not smiling. Mom, be happy. Or like if she pissed me off and I'm just like ignoring her, she's like, mom, be happy. I'm like, you just drove me nuts, but okay. (laughs) How is the toddler phase for you? Because I'm finding it, like a couple months ago, she was, she went through this phase where she was so hard. Mm -hmm. And like literally the last two days, she's been a fucking angel. Like it's just, I'm like, it really makes you appreciate those moments a lot more after you've been through the rough stuff. I feel like I've had a really, really easygoing baby and toddler. And then like three weeks ago, kind of sort of around the time she started preschool, there was some really challenging days where Mm -hmm. I was like, who kidnapped my child and gave me this thing? Mm -hmm. We had one morning where we went to the farmer's market and we had to leave Mm. because it was bad, like really, really bad. I couldn't get through to her. And I remember we came home and I I was like, I left her inside with Adam and I went to the garage and I opened a meditation app and I was like, I need to recalibrate my breathing because I don't know <laughs> what that tantrum just did to me. It was hard. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I never know what version of her I'm going to get now, but I've been spending a lot of my nights reading about specific situations with tantrums. Like, I guess 90% of toddlers like don't really like the process of getting dressed or these mm-hmm. little transition activities. So I've just been trying to read tips on like how to make them a little smoother. So I think they're helping. Yeah. But yeah, I don't. Sometimes she's an angel. Sometimes she's a toddler. Yeah. The transition is definitely hard. And yeah, I'm reading all the books and like I even signed up to that Big Little Feelings yes, podcast. I <laughs> yeah. Like the, the, the workshop. All the guys watching this are like, what the fuck, dude? I know. What Too is your, bad. What is your split? Too bad. Oh, like 96% men. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'll, I will share this with my mom page girls and they'll appreciate all this conversation. <laughs> it's fine. It's my podcast. I can talk about whatever I want. It's true. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 definitely those transition times are are hard. And it's funny that you said that about the farmer's market because I was at the farmer's market with her down in Malibu a couple of weeks ago and we're there and she's actually just like a, she's just potty trained. Like she's, oh, okay. Like she's finally got it now for the most part. Like she's a, accidents here and there, but she's not, you know, she's not wearing diapers anymore mm-hmm. except at night. Like so, you know, we reached this this point, which I feel is like monumental. And so we're at the farmer's market and she's like, mommy, I have to, I have to poopy and it's fucking hot. And I, you guys know this. I have, think of where the bathroom is there too. Cause I've it's been there. It's far. Okay. It's all the way in Cross Creek. It's fucking okay. far. It's not even close. <laughs> um, and I also like, so I got 360 lipo like, okay. a, like a month ago. So I've got compression that on. Hurts. Yeah. And I've got like boards and foam and a fucking faha and, and all this hot. shit and it's hot. So I'm running with her to the oh, bathroom, like no. running with her. And she's like, I have to poopy. I'm like, hold it, baby. Hold it. You got this. We get to the bathroom. There's a line. Oh. I like cut in front of everyone. Like, I'm like, you have to let me in. My baby's going to poop. Don't in her tell bed. me she didn't poop when you get nope. there. Nope. We get in yeah. there and she goes, Mommy, I don't have to poop. And I was like, I'm going to literally yeah. kill you. This is what happened at the farmer's market. She's like, I have to go to the bathroom. I go into the bathroom with her, put her on the toilet. I don't have to go. Take her off. I have to go. Literally, we did this back and forth until I wanted to pull my hair out. And, and you know, when I was, um, I used to do ABA training with uh, kids who have autism. Mm-hmm. And they, they say in behavioral um, psychology that there's only four functions of behavior. So if someone does something, it's only for these four reasons. Okay. It's automatic. Like people who bite their nails, just like how they feel. Mm-hmm. Escape from demands. They don't want to do something and they're trying to get out of it. One is attention and the other one is for a tangible item of some sort. Okay. And I'm like looking this tantrum in the face, like which one, what is it? Which category does it fall under? So I know what to do and I can't figure it out. And like, you know, I I always try to figure out like the scientific reasoning for every little thing she does. And sometimes there is just no explanation. You know, they try to tell you, oh, this is why. And yeah, you got to do this and wake up 30 minutes earlier and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. (laughs) You know, yeah, it's complicated. I had one of those situations where I tried every trick in the book, like trying to put her in the bath. I tried you know, the like taking away a story. I tried the, you know, bribing her. I tried the reasoning with her. I tried letting her have her tantrum and write it out. I tried giving her choices. 
everything and just like nothing worked. And she literally like came up to me, looked me in the face and just screamed in my face like a monster oh, and then just no. like hit me. Ugh. And I was just like, you're a devil child. And then daddy, daddy, daddy. I want daddy, daddy, daddy. Did she forget about the tantrum two minutes later? Um, n- Well, once I got her in the bath, she didn't want to get out. And then it was Ugh. a whole other process getting her out. But like this was that difficult stage where she was. And I think it's just something, I don't know how it is with like Parker's relationship with you versus Adam, but I think there's something about the mother daughter relationship where like it's, she challenges me more. Like she oh, 100%. loves my husband. She's uh-huh. so attached to him. Like she's, ve- she's actually <laughs> last night I asked her and I said, I love you, Violet. And I said, do you love me? She goes, no, I love dad. <laughs> oh yeah. Last night she was giving me kisses and wouldn't give out of one. And it's just like, they can really hurt her feelings. Right. And they just like, they're not even realizing they're doing it. But yeah, I'll always pick her up from hanging out with like my aunts or something. And they're like, she was a perfect angel. And I'm yeah. Like, of course she was. Yeah. Of course. So does she, but does she, do you find that she treats you and Adam differently? Um, I will say that I'm usually the one doing all the annoying, challenging stuff with her. Same. And he gets to have a lot more fun with her. I'm like, hey, you guys go outside so I can take a shower. Same. They're playing in the yard. Like, what problem? There's No no one's asking anything of her but to play. But yeah. with me, I'm trying to get her fed. I'm trying to get her dressed. I'm trying to do her hair, you know? Yeah. So there's a lot of battles to put up with me. Yeah, I'm definitely the disciplinarian. My husband's like the, the, fun, the fun parent. Yeah. So I feel like that's pretty normal. So how did becoming a mom, like – change your perspective on work and your relationship with it? You know, I I believe people want me to sit here and say that I feel really like guilty about my job more so now that I have like a daughter and things like that. Um, And I I don't, I don't know if there's something wrong with me, but I don't feel bad about what I do. I don't feel like what I do is unethical. I think there is things in this business that can be unethical, but I think that I just already don't participate in those things. And the things that I get concerned with while having a daughter are the things that people probably wouldn't think of. Like Parker watches me get my makeup done many, many times a month and she's really into makeup because of it and she Mm -hmm. wants to be like me and stuff like that. And I think that that's something that is more concerning to me, like what influence I have on her in that way. Like I don't want her to sit around and think like the beautification of herself is super important, Mm -hmm. even though I need that to use that as a tool for my job. It is part Mm -hmm. of my job. I was at the nail salon yesterday and I saw this like 16 year old girl getting some really intricate long nail design. And then when she got to the counter, I heard her total was like $230. And I'm like, this girl is sitting here for two plus hours spending her time getting her nails done, like what else could she be doing? And that's with like every thing that we do to make ourselves look better, right? Mm -hmm. Like I really hate that that has to exist and I really want to sort of hide her from that part of the world as much as I can, but it's hard when I also am an active participant in that part of the world and she has to witness it. And so therefore I'm saying to her like, this is really important. Yeah. And I don't want her to live in a world that where that is really important. Yeah. I want her to be a kid. I want her to fucking play. I yeah. want her to read. I want her to do active things and right. not sit around making herself look better. Right. No, I feel you on that. It's like I want to encourage Violet to like love herself the way she is and like love her body mm-hmm. and not have like, you know, the body issues that I had when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, here I am, like, I went and got, like, lipo. And, yeah. you know, like, I'm constantly, like, trying to work out. And, you know. Um, if my family talks about dieting in front of my daughter in Armenian, I'm, like, telling everyone to shut up. Like, <laughs> I am so on it. Like, I really want to try to shield her from that as much as possible. Mm-hmm. But we also live in Los Angeles. Yeah. And this is my job. And, like, if if she doesn't learn it from me, she's going to learn it from some girl at her middle school. And, you know. Yeah. No, it's like you can't protect her from all of that, but I know. But you could try. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. It's it's going through that world through the world trying to like let your children have their own experience, but wanting to protect them from that experience. Yeah. It's so heartbreaking to see them go through anything that's painful, but that's mm-hmm. where you grow. Yeah. You know? Like I showed up at school the other day and some like bitch pulled her hair and she's crying <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna kill that child. But of uh, course, like I'm not- what? What am I gonna do? What, you, I'm gonna go yell at a four year old? No, like, I'm what not. What are you gonna do? Tell her, like, pull her hair back? Like, yes. I, don't, I, I don't know. You don't want her to be the mean kid, too. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, exactly. So, I mean, it's interesting that you're talking about how people think that you should feel guilty about your job. And, you know, I, I hear that so much from people who are like sex workers and also mothers. And um, I just find it like, 
I just find it so sad because I obviously don't find that there's anything, like you said, unethical with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Like it's a job, it's entertainment for adults. Mm -hmm. Um, You're working on your own, you're making your own money, you're setting your own rules, you're working with other, you know, women who are also like kind of in that same place. I mean, the industry is so different now too than it used to be. Like everybody's like their own personal content creator. Mm -hmm. And it just like this whole idea of trying to shame women for being like sexually liberated makes me crazy and I think it resonates with me especially because you know like my mom is like such a sexually liberated woman and I grew up you know my mom didn't perform in front of the camera but she was a you know director and photographer. Do you remember what that conversation was like when you were did your mom that your mom told you like this is what I do for work? So no, because she never hit it and then made it some big Mm. like deal. It was never a big deal. So there's an age that you can remember where she just said, like, I'm going on set. I take photos of naked people. Like- I don't I, I, th- I don't remember any specific conversation, but I feel like what I do remember is her telling me, like, so our guest house was their office, and that's okay. where they worked out of, and that's where they had the magazines and all that stuff. This is before the internet, people. Yeah. Um, and – you know, I couldn't go into the back rooms where basically all the porn was held. Like I could walk into like the the reception area if I needed to find them, but I couldn't go into the back rooms. And I feel like I remember them saying, you know, mommy and daddy take pictures for grownups and you're not a grownup. And that was it. It wasn't like, this is exactly what it is. It was just like, it's not age appropriate for you. I mean, as a kid, I didn't really question it. When I tell Parker something's for a grown up, she she's like, "All right, it's for a grown up." Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I didn't question it. And then when I got older, you know, obviously, like kind of getting closer to puberty, I was more interested, and that's when I started stealing the magazines. <laughs> but um, before that, it wasn't like I don't know. When you're a kid, you don't care about what your parents do for a living. I know. I can't remember a single thing of any, that any of my friends' parents did for a living. Yeah, it wasn't really like an important conversation to us. Right. I feel like my mom would always ask me, like, what do so-and-so's parents do? And I'm like, I have no fucking clue. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, when you're a kid, you just care, like, are you loved? Are you getting the right toys? Are you being fed? Do you feel safe? Yeah. You know? Like, those other things don't matter. Yeah. Are you worried about when, like, are you thinking about having, like, a conversation with her at Not some point? Not so much point? right now. I mean. Um, I think the new thing that Adam and I have sort of decided since this whole new cycle with the scene with Jason is just that we're like not going to share her online anymore. Mm. Um, which is unfortunate cause you know, I was making like mini vlogs of she and my, my life together and all the time we'll show them to her. Like, you know, her, mm-hmm. the day she got her ears pierced or whatever. And I feel like because I'm not putting those out, I'm not creating them as much, but I need to just start making them just to save in my mm-hmm. own little Dropbox or whatever. But, you know, there was just way too many viral pictures of her on yeah. Twitter and video and reels and things like that where the whole concept was like, look at this terrible mom, look at this terrible dad, many, many millions of views on these things. And it's like, because I I was already a sex worker and I was fucking my husband and then all of a sudden I fucked someone else. And now I'm, a, I mean, they already called me a bad mom before, but now it's more so. Um, and so I actually stopped posting on my safe for work, like mom Instagram page until today. I posted a photo of Adam and I, and then I posted a photo of Parker and I, but I blocked out her face and like, the, the comments went from being something very positive before and that being like a really safe space for me to to, to being really negative today. Yeah. And I'm like, I felt wow. So I have a private mom account and I follow Yuriolana the mom account mm-hmm. on there. And come to think of it now, I just realized, yeah, I haven't seen any. Yeah, I haven't been active on there. Um, you can, have you considered making it private? It's verified, so you can't go private when you're verified. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I just think I'm not going to share her anymore, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, everyone's just like, oh, you're making money off your daughter. And this, I never made money, any money off of any yeah. of the content I made from, from with my daughter. It was yeah. just, I was just sharing it because I, that was my life. Like 99% of my life is that. Yeah. The other 1% is me dolled up going to set. Yeah. But everything else is like, I'm, I'm a mom. I'm like a full-time mom, even though I'm a full-time businesswoman. Yeah. But I mean, and and that is only possible because you work for yourself and because of yes. platforms like OnlyFans and YouTube and stuff Absolutely, like that. Absolutely, 100%. Which is why, you know, I always say like why – I mean, for me, like I didn't have an OnlyFans really before. I mean, I had – it's a long, boring story. Most people know about it. I accidentally leaked <laughs> nudes that I had taken when I was 29. Um, and then I like 
once they were out there, I was like, okay, well, I can't, take, I can't take them back. So yeah. I like doubled down on them. Um, but then like, I didn't really update my OnlyFans. And then when I got pregnant, um, actually right before I got pregnant, I was kind of like, you know, this is something people seem to care. It seems to be like, an, you know, a good way to make extra money. Yeah. And my husband encouraged me. He's like, yeah, you know, babe, you're beautiful. Yeah, I'll take the Aww. pictures. I was like, okay. And then it be, ended up becoming such a godsend for me because, like, it enables me to turn down the work I don't want to have and spend more time with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I know so many moms that say the same thing. Like, OnlyFans literally liberated me from, like, that grueling nine to five yeah. where, like, I can't see my kid and now I have time for my kids, which is yeah. not something that a lot of people consider when they think about that platform. Yeah, I feel so guilty when I even have to leave her for a few hours and then I have to remind myself, like, you're so lucky, you're so fortunate. So many moms and dads just get to squeeze in like that little morning time and that mm -hmm. little time before bed. Mm -hmm. And I get to see so much of her. Yeah. And, yeah. and watch her grow up. Yeah. You know, which a lot of people miss. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about Lena and Adam's relationship. They recently got married about their fabulous wedding. Of course, her scene with Jason Love um, and so much more. So stick around. We'll be right back. Remember those jitters from back in the dating game? The butterflies you felt when things were just about to get, well, sexy? But what if you could do something that would keep your confidence bolstered in those early days of intimacy? Enter your new wingman, Blue Chew. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. So whether it's your first date or your 50th, you can always be ready when the moment is right. The best part about Blue Chew? No more awkward visits to the doctor's office. Their online prescription service means that you can get the chewables delivered straight to your door in discreet packaging. Just go to bluechew.com today and connect with a licensed medical provider who will determine exactly what you need to keep your mojo going. Stay in the game and embrace every opportunity. Get a boost in confidence and more importantly, performance. Try Blue Chew today. And because we're feeling the love, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment for free when you use our special promo code HOLLY. Just pay $5 in shipping. Revive those date nights and bring back the fun with Blue Chew. Remember, confidence is just a chew away with code HOLLY at bluechew.com to try it out for free. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, so we spent the first half of the podcast talking about your daughter. Uh, let's talk about the other baby in your life, your man. Uh, my man, <laughs> <laughs> who I often say is my other toddler. <laughs> I can relate to that. Uh, so you guys recently got married. Yes. Which is very exciting. Very and exciting. I want to hear the details about the wedding because I was watching all this stuff online. It looked incredible. Um, but I want to go back to your podcast, Touchy Subject. That I don't do anymore. Which, which you don't do anymore. Yeah, I which is, you know, like, it was it was good. I, I loved the way you dressed up like a fucking princess <laughs> for all the episodes. Like, I watched it just to see what you were wearing. It was very fun. I thought that was great. But yeah, I... I I think with a podcast, the fear for me is that you have to be super regular. Yes. And that I, I felt like I didn't have enough guests backed up and people would flake and then I'd, I, it would just stress me out a lot. Yeah. And then my assistant and Parker and I went on like a month long Europe trip to look for locations for the wedding and it just sort of fell apart from there. And then when I came back, I didn't start it again. So maybe one day, but I don't know. I'm not. Uh, you have so much going on. It's like, and I feel like. a lot for plug talk. Yeah. yeah. And you're doing well enough that do you really like have to do all the things? Like, do you ever feel like, I know we're deviating from the topic, but do you ever feel that, I don't know, like sometimes for me, I get all these ideas and I want to do all these different mm -hmm. things. And then a lot of times I'm like, I just need to like slow the fuck down and focus on just a couple of things. Like, why well, do I, I have to feel like I have to do everything? With touchy subject, the, the point of it was that it was for me mm -hmm. and it was for my very tiny female audience. Um, and it didn't make any money and mm -hmm. like that, that it was just more like a passion project. Cause mm -hmm. basically I fo I'm focused now on the things that do make me the most money right. because if I'm going to step away from Parker, then I want it to have financial value. But then there's like the whole meaning gap in my life, right? Like the questions we ask on plug talk are not the questions that I want to ask the, mm -hmm. the girls. Yeah. I want to ask them about the hardships of their life, the, the insecurities that they had going into set and like what that did, what happened after, you know, like their growth and everything. And the whole point of the, the podcast is to 
to masturbate. So it's, right. there's only certain things I can ask. So, um, yeah, you, you don't want like, you don't want guys to lose their boner. Exactly. Before the, exactly. So the with touchy starts. subject, it was supposed to be like, sort of like the anti flick talk. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe one day again, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, that's a great thing about being a content creator, right? You can like start it up again whenever you want. Yeah, I can, I can do it. You don't like want. have to. Yeah. You can start and stop and it's all under your control. So back to Adam. Yes. Okay. So you had him on and you guys had a very, I mean, you document almost your whole life online. Yeah. You're always very open and honest. And this was a particularly raw and honest interview. And in that interview, you guys did talk about like, you know, your concerns with him cheating, I guess, in the past and how you guys like almost split up. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there was just a lot of feedback in the comments of people being like, you're too good for Adam. Like you guys should, you know, you, sh you can do better. Like, how did that make you feel? Or do you even read the comments at all? I do read the comments. Um, I do sometimes wonder about taking that whole podcast down because I don't think that it paints our relationship in a good way. I don't think Adam answered the way that he should have. And he probably would agree with me now since we've talked about it after the fact. Um, but that was the first time that we'd ever talked about Adam cheating or anything like that, which now we've talked about it here and there a little bit. But, you know, that was like earlier in our relationship, I would say within the first year or two. And then the conversation we had was like five or six years into our relationship. So mm -hmm. I feel like maybe he felt a little bit attacked by the conversation. Uh, I don't think he was really expecting it. And yeah, I, I did. I, I wasn't really happy with how he replied to me. Um, and then the comments also were sort of on my side. And yeah, it, it was a little tough for me when that yeah. happened. Yeah. But I mean, ultimately, nobody knows your relationship like you do. Yeah. Seems to have worked out. Yeah. And you I feel I, good and secure now. I do. I do feel good and secure now. Um, and I will say that I think Adam was a lot harder of a person earlier in our relationship. And I think um, that I've sort of helped soften him up a little. And I made him go to therapy because I feel like he needed it. Um, I was like, I'm not going to have a kid with you if if you have this sort of attitude with things. Right. Um, and yeah, I think it's gone up from there. So... One thing that you mentioned on there was, you know, people say once a cheater, always a cheater. But it seems to me that you believe that people can change. Yeah, I think so. Um, when Adam cheated on me, I, I knew. Like, I, I, I could tell. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't have any signs of that having happened. So I, I don't believe that once a cheater, always a cheater. Um, I think it was really hard for Adam in the beginning of our relationship because we got together like right before he sort of took off. Mm. And so we had all this new female attention and didn't really know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, and not to make any excuses for him, but that was sort of what was happening at the time. And I think now he's sort of gotten used to the fact that maybe there's more attention and stuff and he doesn't really care as much. And then I think the other piece of it is that, you know, we have so much sex for a living. And so the male <laughs> yeah. part of the part of his male brain that like wants to have sex with more women. Yeah. The need is met. In yeah. A way, you know, you kind of are like the perfect wife, probably. Uh, I probably, mean, he must probably. like, I'm sure that on at least some level, he like recognizes like, I mean, do you ever tell him like, you're not going to do better than me? No, I never tell him that because he, he'll he'll probably have some really snarky <laughs> remark that will come back and be like, well, so-and-so will let me fuck other girls too. I don't, I don't fucking know. He'll probably say something. He won't let me have it. <laughs> so um, let's talk about – let's let's talk about happy, happy things. Uh, you guys got married. Yes. You had a magical wedding in a castle in Italy. Yes. Um, what was planning that event like? Because I just feel like – I so I <laughs> – Funny story, I've been married twice and I've never had a wedding. I've also never been proposed to. <laughs> what? I you know. To unpack there. I know, I know. It's okay. The first time my first husband, we got married for immigration reasons. He was English. We were together as a couple and we got married so that he could move here and we could try to like make our relationship work. So it wasn't just so we could get a green card. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of like a last minute thing so that we could get the papers going. And then my current husband, uh, we got married because I was knocked up. Oh. So. Okay. And it was just kind of like a. I thought you guys were married long before Violet. I didn't mm -mm. realize that. Okay. Yeah. No, we, I brought it up and we had both been divorced and he was kind of like, he was hesitant about getting married. And I was just like, okay. Like, and I wasn't, 
I don't know. I was past that stage of wanting like a big wedding. It didn't mm -hmm. matter to me yeah. that much. Um, and then <laughs> once I got pregnant and I was like, you have really good health insurance and I don't, I'm like, we should get married. And that's literally what we did. Wow. So how was your you know, experience? I, I was exhausted by the idea of planning a wedding and I was sort of like, let's elope and go on a honeymoon. And then Adam was like, no, let's have this really big lavish wedding, which I thought that he was not gonna say something that's like that. Interesting that that was his take. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I want a big party all about me. Um, and I was like, okay. So I started doing some venue tours in Malibu because I was like, well, if I do get married in LA, I want it to be by the ocean. I want to be able to see the ocean. And there was very limited venues out there that would accommodate a party of my size and see the ocean. And like I went and did one venue tour and I wanted the house. And it was $150,000 for the weekend to have a house. Wow. And that didn't include food. That didn't include anything. It was actually cheaper for me to do my wedding in Italy while also paying for like many members of my family's flight and accommodations. Wow. So that was sort of the idea behind it. I was like, I don't want to get married somewhere in LA and then drive home. Yeah. Um, my family, when they immigrated to LA, they like all moved to Glendale and then they sort of have like never left. Mm -hmm. And so doing the wedding in Italy was like a way for me to make my family leave the country mm -hmm. and like sort of do like a big family vacation. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, when I went and saw venues, I was like, okay, I want a fucking castle. I want, I want Bridgerton vibes, Game of Thrones vibes. Like just this fantasy element would be so pretty to me. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, it was beautiful. So you found what was about what was it about the place that you guys finally chose? Um, I just the, just the castle. I mean, Italian wedding venues are gorgeous. They're like wineries. Um, they're old monasteries. They're all super beautiful. Yeah. Um, but the the castle was the winner for me. So that was the only castle that you saw. Yes. Okay. Yes. I didn't know how many castles. And it was like show. a pretty inconvenient location because mm -hmm. it was like more than an hour outside of Florence. And it was like a very bumpy ride on the ride home from the wedding, which I left my wedding in a bus with everybody else. I was fully regretting my venue decision <laughs> because I was trying not to throw up in the car the whole time. It was, it was rough. It was bad. I mean, and you guys had Parker there. Parker was there. And yeah. she stayed up. It seems like to see the fire, you guys had fireworks, had fireworks which yeah. is fucking crazy. The fireworks were the cheapest thing, actually. They were not that really? expensive. Yeah. But, um, she was hilarious cause she was there. Uh, she wouldn't walk down the aisle as a flower girl. She didn't want to do it, but she was sitting in my sister-in-law's lap and we're doing our vows to each other. And, you know, we're like, you are my whatever. And she's just in the crowd like, and I'm your Parker Ann. She's like <laughs> doing all these really cute ad libs. And they had given her jelly beans to sort of get her to, you know, stay calm. Because if she sees Adam and I hug, she's running in. She's like, I'm coming in for a hug too. Oh, I love that. And you just hear her with her jelly beans like, what color is this? Like she was being so funny. And I'm so glad that we have footage of that. Just to be able to tell her like you were hilarious. I was just going to say that that I feel like makes the vows even more special. Everyone was trying to cry and she was making them laugh. <laughs> That's great. She's like the comic relief. That's perfect. She was. She was great. It was awesome. And but and she held up through the whole wedding like pretty well. I did feel bad for the three toddlers through, that were there because it was loud and it was but the late factor didn't matter I think because of the time difference. It was oh fine. yeah, good point. But like it was fucking loud. Yeah. And then you guys went on a honeymoon. Yeah. For like, what, like three weeks? Yeah, we were out in Europe for like a month. We had um, my assistant slash friend with us and she helped with Parker. But yeah, it was, a, it was a, a long, lot. wonderful vacation. How did she handle the travel? She's pretty good. Um, I had taken her to Europe for like three weeks with just my assistant before. She can hang out. She's good. Yeah. I literally took Violet for the first time on a plane a few weeks ago to Mexico for two hours because that was like, I was, I'm so scared to put her on a plane. I'm uh -huh. like, we can manage that. And on the way back, she like shit herself and shit all over the seat. <laughs> and I'm she had sure to go you... through customs in like only a diaper because she got shit all over her clothes. Oh and all the clothes were in the suitcase on the other side of customs. And it was just like. Oh, no. Yeah. Every time I've almost not packed a second pair of clothes and then remember to do it last minute is the time that. Yeah. Yeah, really definitely. Accident. I should have done that. I mean, it went, and this is only a two hour flight. So I'm just like, I don't know if I can ever like go longer than that because she was okay during it but I felt like she started to get a little antsy towards the end yeah it's it's a lot of like do you want this do you want this what about this? yeah we can change the channel yeah it's it's a lot of that yeah <laughs> bringing a lot of stuff um okay so let's talk about your recent scene with Jason Love yes so how did you come up with the concept first of all like what made you decide okay I'm gonna try to work with another guy um I feel like I've hinted at it in my relationship a little bit, maybe in the last couple of years. I think in the beginning of my relationship, I had like zero interest. 
um, and doing a, a scene with someone else. But I think like as my fans have sort of asked for it more and more, I was kind of like, well, maybe I should. And I, I brought it up to Adam before the wedding. And to my surprise, he actually said yes. Um, and then we were sort of like going through guys and we ended up on Jason. And I, I, I wasn't even sure if he was shooting mm-hmm. at the time. And so I, my message to him was just like, hey, I think I'm going to do my first scene without Adam. Are you, can I shoot with you or are you retired? And he just said, yes, we can shoot. And we had come back from our wedding and the honeymoon and everything. And I was on Instagram and I just saw that Jason was in LA. Mm -hmm. And I was like, can you shoot tomorrow? And he said, yes. It was like, there was not a lot of time to plan anything, which I'm glad because in my mind, I was like making it this big thing where I was like, okay, I'm going to go do porn research. I'm going to sit there on Pornhub and I'm going to watch all the girls in all these crazy positions and I'm going to practice and whatever. Like, I don't know what got into my head that I was going to just so, sort of changed my whole brand, but no, I thought none of that happened. I like planned the whole shoot in five hours. Wow. Um, and it was a weird place to be with Adam because I'm like, if we're home, it's the weekend and I'm planning my shoot with somebody else. It's like new territory for me. I wasn't sure like what I should talk about, what I shouldn't talk about, but like all of my lingerie and my nice heels and everything, they're at the no jumper office. And mm-hmm. it was like, I didn't want to ask for the keys to go get my stuff, to go fuck someone else. <laughs> so then I'm like, hey, the mall's closing in two hours. You think you can watch Parker? I got, I got to go. And then I was like buying. It was it was weird. I felt so weird and so awkward about the whole thing. Um, and my assistant was like on vacation that weekend. So I couldn't even call her in to like help me or anything. I was really, really nervous, especially planning it so fast. Like found a filmer last minute. I don't usually like hire a filmer to film my stuff. I just like do iPhone or whatever. Um, and yeah, on the day of, I was like a nervous wreck. Um, I was trying to put off starting the scene and like any little, I was like, I'm thirsty. Oh, I need more lube. Like whatever, like little thing that I could think of because I felt so wrong. And yeah, and yeah like Jason was laughing at me. The film was laughing at me. They're like, what, what is this set? Like, <laughs> she's like, we're here to fuck and we're not, we're not doing it. Um, and then I was like, whatever, we're just, we're just going to do this, you know? And I think like I'm sucking Jason's dick and I'm just like, what is happening? Like I'm, I'm like in my head, like this is not Adam's dick in my mouth. Like I should not be doing this, you know? How long had it been since you've been with another guy? Like seven years. Yeah. Wow. The entire time that I've been with Adam. So yeah, seven years. Um, yeah, it just felt weird. It felt so weird to me. And then, you know, I sort of got out of my head and we got on with the scene and we did the whole thing. But yeah, no one believes me. Even now, the comments are going to, she didn't look nervous to me, yada, yada, yada. I was fucking nervous. Well, I mean, you're, you know, you're a performer, so we can, we can perform and, yeah. you know, have people, people don't need to know what's going on inside our head. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the scene's done. Yeah. How did you feel afterwards? It felt weird. I was like, do I stay here at this location or I'm Oh, and now I have to go home. Like, what is the aftermath going to be yeah. like? You know, I was happy we got it done. I felt like the scene was really good. Um, Jason felt good about the scene. The filmer said it looked great and everything. But I was just like, okay, we did it. Like, it's done. Mm-hmm. It's great. I was like, okay, should I have gotten like more promotional assets? I had like all these ideas for things I wanted to do. And then I, at the moment that it was starting, I just got too nervous. I didn't want to like do too many TikToks and whatever. I was like, let's just fucking get this shit over with. But yeah, then um, I didn't even text Adam about like the scene being done. I was just like, hey, I'm hungry. I'm going to order Dave's. Do you want anything to eat? <laughs> like just completely <laughs> avoiding the subject. And he was like, yeah, sure. I, I guess we'll talk about the scene later. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. And then I came home and I guess I had like a really big adrenaline dump because I was laying in bed at like 6 p.m. And Adam walks in a little concerned. Like, are you OK? I'm like, yeah, I'm just really tired, <laughs> which also was weird. Like, OK, why are, you, why are you so tired? You never lay down at 6 p.m. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think I like I was up to here about mm-hmm. the whole thing. Just like so much nerve, so much adrenaline. And then once it was over, I was so like, I didn't know what was going to happen at that point in my yeah. relationship. It was new. So how did the conversation with Adam go afterwards? Like, like did he ask, like, so how was the scene? And you were... Yeah. Uh, I didn't know what to say. You know, there's all those memes about, like, oh, imagine your, your girlfriend's a sex worker and she comes home from work and tells you how good it was. Like, yeah. you know, uh, I was trying to give, like, short one-word answers. Didn't really want to talk about it. Didn't know how to talk about it. And then Adam kept pressing the issue. I felt like he really wanted to know. Um, and then I think we got to a point where I was like too honest. I was like first not sharing anything. And then I was a little too honest about how the scene was and that it was like, it felt good and everything. And 
Adam was kind of like, whoa, <laughs> like that was a lot, you know? So then I was like, fuck, I I'm, I'm maybe crossed the line there, but I don't really, I didn't really know what the line was in our relationship. Cause yeah. with Adam, we've had so many threesomes and I could tell when something feels a little bit better than it normally does, mm -hmm. you know? Cause I just know him so well, mm -hmm. but he won't really tell me like, yeah. you know, I'm like, oh, her head was really good. But like, it's not like, oh fuck, that was the best head ever, yeah. you know? Like he's, he's really, um, respectful. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it was like new territory for me. I wasn't really sure like what I was supposed to say, especially because Adam kept pressing the issue. Um, and then I would say for like a couple of days, it was a little weird, maybe between us, a little rocky. Adam would throw jokes at me about me being a cheater. And I was like, hey, like, yeah, come on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I guess I didn't feel guilty at that point. Once I saw that, like everything was cool between us, everything mm -hmm. was okay. Cause I was at some point worried, like what if Adam thinks he's okay with this? And then what if it totally changes his opinion of me? Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like that could happen to some guys. Yeah. Um, but it, it didn't like everything ended up being okay. So. I mean, the marketing like leading up to it was very funny. Like Adam was posting some really. He was leaning into it. Fun yeah. Like he was really leaning into it. And I, I love that, you know, because I think that, you know, and you, oh my God, there's just like so many comments about like, you know, Adam's a simp and how could he let his, you know, wife like have sex with another man and all this kind of stuff. And I just, I don't know, like, I obviously don't know Adam, but I feel like he seems like a pretty confident guy. And these people's idea that you would leave Adam for this other guy just because like he has a bigger dick or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like it's just to me so odd. It's the projection of every guy's fear, right? That's exactly what I was going to say. It says so much more about the person who's commenting negatively about it than it does about you or Adam at all. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's funny because I don't think girls always think this way. Like I don't think Adam's going to leave me with for a girl with bigger tits. But yeah. I do think guys think like, oh, she's going to leave me for the guy with the bigger dick. Right. That is not the only measurement that we are no. using when we are with someone. I know. It's, it's a bonus if you have a big one, but like it is not the whole picture. Yeah. I mean, it's just like you built your life with this guy. You guys had a kid together. You have like a successful business together. Like it's just so strange that guys think that like you would just jump yeah. ship and it's literally like, for like an extra couple of inches. I honestly don't know how their penises yeah. measure up. And like, but I don't know. It's like I, people also probably don't believe this about girls, but like girls get DMS from people who are super successful and super rich and super famous all the time. And they just don't go for it. That's like, yeah. that's not the only thing with girls, you yeah. know, like, I get DMs from people all the time. I just fucking don't open them. Like I want my partner. That's why I'm with my partner. Not right. because I think he's like the best I'm going to get or anything. I just like, I, this is the person that I want. This is what I want my relationship to be with. Right. And like, I, 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 I don't know. I just, I just think it's so strange. Like I did the scene with, with Jason. We had a little fun little press run and I don't, I don't, I haven't seen him since the scene. I don't know when the next time I'm going to see him is, you know, mm -hmm. it, people just can't really believe that that could be the case. It's like, yeah. oh, she's still thinking about him. She's fucking him behind Adam's back. Like everyone just makes these little backstories because it is all of their fears yeah. in their relationships. I think it also really pissed them off that I'm in this relationship with Adam and Adam like allowed me to go do this thing because they think in some way that I'm going to influence their wife or their girlfriend mm -hmm. to request the same thing or like I'm sort of normalizing it when I'm when I'm not really normalizing it like I'm a sex worker like mm -hmm. I, I I wanted to do more in my job or do something different in my yeah. job it's not like I was like hey Adam I want to open relationship and I want you to agree with that to that to that right you know? which also too like wouldn't necessarily mean that you loved him any less no. you know I mean it's I'm in a monogamous relationship and that works for us. But I talked to tons of people who are in open relationships, polyamory. My parents were swingers. Mm -hmm. My mom was definitely the more promiscuous of them. Like my mom, <laughs> my parents used to go to like orgies together all the time. And my dad actually used and, to and tell me. they were this, still together? Like I know, oh. up until your dad passed, I know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've been together since they were like 22, like 60 years. And my mom was like always about my dad. My dad was like the one for her. Like the sex yeah, her foundation, was the sex. Her, like yeah. that, the rest. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the rest of the shit didn't matter. Like he was her everything. 
And I and my dad used to like make jokes about it. And I remember this one story that he used to love to tell. They went to an orgy and I think my dad had a headache or something like that. So he was like downstairs and my mom was upstairs like banging a bunch of dudes. <laughs> And some guy comes down the stairs and he goes, oh man, you got to go up there. That, that woman up there, she's so fucking hot. My dad goes, yeah, that's my wife. <laughs> okay. See, knowing this story about your parents, does it change your opinion of them to think they're bad people? No. Okay. Thank you. Not at all. My parents are wonderful people. And like my parents were, you know, like really close. And I mean, I want to get like all whatever, but like my family's very close. And, yeah. you know, when my dad passed away, my mom was devastated. I mean, it was just like they had such a love story. They yeah. felt they fell in love the minute they saw each other. Like wow. it was like an electricity. And I have like an incredible interview with my dad like um, a couple of years before he died talking about the first time he saw my mom. And it's wow. just like I played it at the funeral. It was like oh, the whole oh place gosh. was in fucking tears. But like – they were just meant to be together, yeah. you know? And like they fucked around when they were younger and they had sex with other people and they had fun and they just and did it their probably thing. Made them closer that they were yeah. so open with each other yeah. and that they could say certain things to each other that mo there's like a big wall, I feel like, in people's relationships yes. where they're not able to admit. Like I can admit that most men and women want to fuck other people. Yes. And, you know, they're I'm not saying that girls are wrong for this, but like they can't handle their boyfriend like liking a photo. And so when yeah. you're comparing that to the fact that like I let my husband fuck other women in front of me, mm -hmm. there's this big gap. And so people just really want to hate on it because they don't understand it. But like I am able to have so many real conversations with my partner and understand my partner in ways that those people don't. And right. I feel like that makes them really uncomfortable. Yeah, because it points to the lack of communication and insecurities in their own relationships. Yeah. I mean, one thing that... I've learned from all the people I've spoken to and also like, you know, I've talked to a lot of sex therapists who have, you know, also pointed out that swingers tend to have the best communication yeah. between them because it's like they're in this position where they have this open relationship, they're having sex with other people. So they have to talk about these things, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas people in monogamous relationships, I think there's like this assumption that comes with it. Like, oh, you're going to be this way. You're only ever going to have sex with me. You're only ever going to want to have sex with me. Um, you know, and, and there's just like no room to discuss yeah. other things. Yeah. And I think that's like the most damaging. Yeah, I agree. Um, when I did the scene with Jason, you know, like there was things that I learned about myself that I wouldn't have known until I did it, like things mm -hmm. in my relationship. Like I was scared for Adam to see the, any of the content, but then I was also so excited to show him. Like mm. it turned me on to know that he was going to watch it and that it also turned him on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't think he really expected to be that turned on by it. Um, I don't know. I was like, oh, I kind of want to like see where this goes. Like I want to explore yeah. this a little bit more because it did bring us closer. Like we ended up having a lot more sex than we normally do in the weeks following the scene with Jason. And it wasn't like – a thing where it was like Adam was trying to like take his ownership of me back or anything. Mm. It was just like we were more turned on and we wanted to fuck more. Interesting. Yeah. So do you think that you might work with other guys in the future? That is a big question mark in our relationship right now. Um, I would like to, but I want to do everything at the pace that my partner is comfortable with because right. I also just like don't want to throw seven years down the drain, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think that we're sort of going to have to figure out like – the parameters, how often, um, if Adam will always be included or not. Like, I don't really know. Um, so we're still sort of in the discussion, this discussion phase of that. Mm. Yeah. And then let's talk a little bit about what happened after the scene, mm -hmm. because there was some controversy about the things that Jason said. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So the scene came out and like the day after the scene came out, an interview came out with Jason where the interviewer was asking some pretty shysty questions. She was mm. really going for it. Um, and, you know, I think Jason, I haven't watched a lot of Jason's scenes, but I'm, so I might be wrong, but I don't think Jason is the kind of on camera lover that the, that the no jumper audience and all the people in the public eye like thought he was going to be like, I think he's a lot softer and gentler and people expected him as this big buff, tall guy to like ruin me in mm -hmm. the scene. And he didn't. And so there was that feedback coming out. And I think 
when the interviewer in this podcast like asked him about it, he sort of said this answer that threw Adam under the bus a little bit. And that bothered me because Adam had been propping Jason up this whole time. Yeah. Like he went out of his way to be like nice about the whole thing. Um, and Jason sort of said something like, oh, you know, I couldn't do that because she was used to like a regular guy. And so I didn't want to go like hard on her or whatever. Let's also point out the fact that Adam is not a regular guy. <sighs> yeah. I mean, do you know what I mean? Like compared to like regular guys. Yeah. I'm sure you do dick ratings on your OnlyFans. Yeah. He's not a regular guy. Yeah. Like he has a good size <laughs> dick, you know, and but like. He could have said any other thing about right. why the scene was the way it was. And instead, he went with this answer that sort of put Adam down. And that really got to me, like more yeah. than I thought it would. Um, just because I was like really proud and happy about Adam's maturity throughout the whole thing. And I was mm -hmm. like, fuck, he didn't deserve that. Yeah. And also, I was like really excited to masturbate to the scene with Adam. And after that, I didn't want to. Yeah, again. no, I was, you like, can't. I was like pissed about it. I yeah. was like, fuck, now – that left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth about it, you right. know? Um, and I don't hate the guy or anything, but yeah, I was kind of like, well, that sucks. Because we we did want to do, like, more content with Jason. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were kind of like, yeah, maybe not, you know? Hey, also, like, wonder why people felt that they need – I mean, are your scenes with Adam super rough? Like, does not he always. destroy I mean, you in every scene? No, I mean, we, we do do some, like, rough blowjob type stuff here and there, but not, like, always. But I think, like, first of all, I'm a wife, so people wanted to see, like, another man destroy someone's wife. They wanted it to be, like, the most disrespectful version of the story that yeah. it could be. And then I think it's, like – also the hypersexualization of black men and then mm. someone who looks like Jason as well. Um, and I, I do like rough scenes, but I'm also glad that it wasn't a rough scene. I, I, I don't really like, I don't know. I don't feel like I would have wanted that for my first scene with someone mm -hmm. else. I'm glad that it was like, I don't, I wouldn't even say it was like super gentle. It just like, I wasn't handicap at the end people were like putting like <laughs> wheelchair emojis under all the things I posted like oh I bet she couldn't walk after it's like no <laughs> like why does it have to be like that I know and it's funny too because you see a lot of complaints of people saying oh poor in these days the women are always being destroyed and they look so uncomfortable like where's the passion where's the love yeah. and then you do like a passionate scene with the man is like why was didn't he destroy yeah. her why isn't she crying afterwards well, like so I think that maybe that's like a demographic split because I think women like more and more I'm talking mm -hmm. to girls on set and that's what they want in scenes is a more passionate see passionate scene where they feel like the couple is like taking their time with each other and yeah I mean it's like I have my audience and Adam has has his audience but the amount of people that have their eyes on this were outside of our audiences okay yeah and maybe those people's expectations of this were a little bit different yeah um I was, before the scene came out, I was a little stressed. I was like, okay, there's going to be a lot more eyeballs on this than I thought would. Like, maybe I do wish I did a little bit of a better job. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, did I make enough eye contact? Did I moan enough? Was I crazy enough? I don't fucking know. <laughs> so the scene did better than you expected. Yes. Yes. I, at one point before it even got filmed, was like, well, what if I do this scene with another person and no one even cares? Then I'll feel so bad. Like maybe yeah. I shouldn't have potentially jeopardized my relationship for this thing and it made no monetary value or whatever. But yeah, obviously it's, it, it blew all of my expectations out of the water. What was like three times the amount I thought I was the number I heard? More than you expected? I'm, I honestly can't even remember what my original number goal was, but I have – it has been confirmed that it was the best-selling OnlyFans scene ever. Really? Yes. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. If I had to guess, I was the top earner of the month in July. That's pretty awesome. Which is crazy. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, for everything that you went through, I feel like <laughs> at least there's that, right? I wasn't so bothered. I feel like I've been on the internet long enough and I've gotten shit, not, shit on long enough that I'm kind of like, eh. I mean, I felt more bad for Adam because yeah. I feel like he was getting more negative attention than even me, even though I – even now when I post any photos, it's like, where's Jason? You cheater. Like, <laughs> it's going to follow me for a while. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I felt like Adam took more hits from it. But he also got a lot more views and made a lot more money from the whole thing as well. Yeah. You feel like he's handled it pretty well? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys have both been in the public eye for so long. Yeah. Like, you know. I feel like he was kind of loving it too. He was like, oh, this is cool. Like, you're getting all this attention, you know? Yeah. And 
it was funny. Like I thought the me- I enjoyed the memes. I thought they were pretty funny. Yeah, there was there was some good stuff in there. Um, so if you do end up working with another male performer, do you think that you might have a more specific conversation about? Yes. What you know the ap- the afterward? I mean, I would imagine that you're probably going to be like, look, I've done I did this before with Jason. This happened. Wasn't happy about that. Yeah. Could you just like? I feel like most people don't need that conversation. Right. I know. Um, and I probably wouldn't work with anyone who I would even think that for one second would do something like that. But mm-hmm. I also didn't think that that would happen with Jason. Um, so yeah, definitely there would be a conversation. And I think it's weird because, you know, throughout the whole process, like I, I was always in touch with Jason and Adam was never in touch with him until after when mm-hmm. we had him on the podcast and everything. But I think in the future it would be like, Maybe we're in a group chat and there's a conversation to be had like with my partner about it all because oh, my yeah. partner, you know, a lot of girls in the industry are in relationships with people who are not in the industry and then they go fuck and then they come back to the partner and it's mm-hmm. fine. But it's just that Adam's a public figure. Right. And that's why it's such a bigger deal. Like, I think Adam would be a lot more comfortable with me doing more scenes with other people, maybe even more often if he wasn't such a public figure and if he didn't get so much shit for it, especially yeah. in the space that he's in. Yeah. Because he's kind of sick of like every time he does a podcast, his guest, even a month later, is like, so that guy fucked your girl, you know? And yeah. he's like, God, are we ever going to stop talking about this? <laughs> like it was a month ago, you know? Yeah. I mean, I feel like the only way to solve this is just to do a lot more scenes with a lot more guys and then it'll be old news and nobody will care anymore. <laughs> See, this is my point of view, but I think Adam is like, they're never going to let me live it down. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I also don't know if I want to do like a million scenes with other guys. Yeah. Like I have like a tiny list on my notes that mm-hmm. I, of people that I would want to work with. Um, but yeah. I wonder how many people would like to see that list. Probably a lot. It's not, it's not that crazy. I mean, it's just like, I want to work with the people who have been working for the studios for like a very long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're in this new OnlyFans era where like literally anyone can pull their dick out and perform. Yeah. And I, I kind of want the guys who have been coached by the directors who have been around enough girls that they know exactly how to act yeah. around women and aren't so green to it because maybe they're like a little too. And they're professional. They're professional. You know, I. They understand their angles. They understand the light. Yes. They're not going to be like weird about having sex with you because you're like a big deal. Yeah. You know? And like that was the the nice thing about working with Jason is like with the v- filmer, he was sort of like he had the he was like, oh, we should do this position here because, you know, we have this bed post and that would look really like he was helping direct a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that was great for me because I have never really shot pro porn before. So I was like, you know, this is not my territory here. Do you ever think that you would? <sighs> like financially would make absolutely no sense. Yeah. But I do think it would be fun. Like mm-hmm. I was like, we get to be like dressed up and dolled up in some sort of cool theme for a day. I guess in that sense, maybe I would I would do it. But but then um, you could always like organize that yourself, right? Exactly. If you wanted like the high end production, like you could afford it, you could put it together. Yeah. So yeah, I don't really know why I would, but yeah, no, understandable. Well, Lena, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure getting to know you. I did have one question from one of my Patreon members. Um, he wanted to know what the plug means. Oh, okay, so boring. Lena the plug is like an old work nickname from when I was like a regular girl working in an office. I was like really good at my job. And my boss was like, you're the plug. And then they also worked in social media. And my Instagram was Lena Nersessian, like a really long, weird last name. Mm-hmm. They're like, that's not good. No one, no one knows what that is and how to say it. So they sort of encouraged me to change my Instagram name to that. And that's how it came from. Adam always tells me to make up some lie about a better story because that one sucks. <laughs> but that's pretty much what it is. Everyone thinks it's like sexual butt plug related yeah. thing. It's not. But so, but a plug, because actually like I didn't, until that song Plug Walk came out, Plug plug Walk, right? That song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plug Walk came out. I didn't know what that was either, but that's like the hookup, right? The hookup, the drug dealer, the yes. connect. So it's like you usually the association is like that you can be connected to drugs, but you can be connected to anything. Right. And so like I was good at my job and helping them with connections with certain things. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's your answer. There's your super boring, silly answer. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So can you tell everybody where they can find you online if they don't already know? Um, I am Lena the Plug on every platform except for Instagram. I'm free Lena the Plug because Lena the Plug is dead on there. But it's okay. Thanks, you guys. This is a lot of fun. I feel like I could talk to you for six hours, especially about mom stuff. I know, right? We should just <laughs> compare do whole notes other- for our daughters who are two weeks apart. <laughs> I know, whole other. It was actually really fun to watch, like 
Parker grew up online because I remember when Violet started talking, Parker started talking yeah. too, and it was just like, okay. So same Riley level. Reed, Ashley has mm-hmm. uh, the exact same due date as my sister, and they had their kids six hours apart. So we try to always do play dates with um, oh her God. son and Riley's daughter because they're like That's literally so cool. the same age. Yeah, yeah that's great. Um, all right, guys, you can find me on Instagram at Holly Randall, on Twitter or X now at Holly Randall. Go to hollylinks.com to get all my social media platforms. And of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch these episodes streamed live, plus get all kinds of bonus content, go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you next week.